Welcome to Drosh Studio. Today we're going to talk about cross contours and how to use them to construct and analyze organic forms. Let's get started. A cross contour is a real or imagined line that moves over a surface and describes its underlying form. To create a cross contour, we can start with any two dimensional shape like this ellipse. If we wrap a line around it like this, it now appears to be three dimensional. This is a cross contour because it moves over the surface and defines the form. If we add more cross contours, it defines the three dimensional shape more clearly. The position of the cross contours also show us that the object is facing our right. By adding a cross contour on the side curving down shows that we are looking down on the object. And one more curving over the top helps define the object's position in space. We can do this again, but make the object face the other direction by changing the position of the cross contours. By curving the side cross contours up and defining the bottom plane shows us we are looking up at the object. We went from a two-dimensional shape to a three-dimensional form by adding cross contours over the surface. This creates volume and defines the object's position in space. Let's try this again with a more organic shape. I will start by drawing cross contours around the shape to define the volume. The position I drew the cross contours shows the shape is pointing to our right. By adding another cross contour on the side helps define the form, and by adding the extra bulge in the contour gives the illusion that the back portion is thicker than the front. By adding a cross contour on the top finishes off the volume and makes it appear that we are seeing the top and left side of the object. We can start again with the same two-dimensional shape, but change the cross contours to show the object in a different position. Wrapping the cross contours around this way makes it appear as though the object is facing our left. One curve like this around the front and side shows us we are looking up at it. A bottom cross contour shows how the cross contour gets lost from our vision as it goes over the back side of the rounded part before it is revealed again. But how do we know which way a cross contour line will go? If we put a cross contour on something like this simple box, it would look like this. It looks a little bit like a wrapped present. These cross contour lines are essentially our X, Y, and Z line systems. If we try the same thing on a cylinder, the cross contours would still represent our X, Y, and Z line systems. But if we put an X line and a Y line through the center, these cross contours don't conform to the curve of the cylinder. If we bend these lines to match the curve of the cylinder, they are no longer true X and Y lines, but a curve that moves across both of these line systems. When we visualize cross contours, we can think about how the X, Y, and Z line systems would be cutting through the object. Imagining the three line systems is especially helpful with complex or organic forms. There is something else we need to know that will help us draw cross contours. Let's take this flat plane and put a series of evenly spaced cross contours down it. If we then tip the plane over so it is moving away from us in space, notice the cross contours get closer together the further away they move from us. This is like looking at train tracks going off in the distance and happens because of a principle of linear perspective. The same is true if we put cross contours around a curved surface. Let's start by putting two cross contours in the middle of the form. Notice how the sides of the cylinder move away from us as they curve towards the outside edge. This means that as cross contours move towards the edge, we will draw them closer together. This will make the curved form look like it has real depth. Cross contours must also conform to the surface they are drawn on. Because this candle holder is cylindrical, cross contours going across the form will be ellipses. The surface is also smooth so the cross contours going down will be straight lines that change angle to conform to the surface. Notice that the cross contours are spaced out in the center and get closer together as they move away from us on the side of the object to show the cylindrical form. Also notice the angles of the cross contours get flatter the closer they are to the center of the object. And if I were to add a cross contour going down the center, it would be a straight line because it's directly in front of our viewpoint. Making the cross contours closer towards the edge and flatter in the middle helps define a curved surface. When we have an object that has an irregular surface, the cross contours must show that too. To begin, look at the outside edge to help you understand what the cross contour should look like. As you draw the other cross contours, make sure they conform to the surface recording the subtlety of the irregular object. Since this pair is a curved object, I will also make the cross contours closer together at the edge 
and flatter towards the center. Now we need to draw the cross contours going in the other direction to help develop the volume of the three-dimensional object. And to finish it off, we need to draw the cross contours on the stem. Even though these organic cross contours don't exactly match the three line systems, envisioning X, Y, and Z can help you understand where to place your contours. Now let's do a fun exercise to help us visualize and draw cross contours better. First, we'll start with two identical bean shapes. For this exercise, use a thicker marker to do the outer contour lines and a thinner marker to do the cross contours. Having the outer contour thicker creates spatial depth and gives some nice line variation. Wrap cross contours around one of them so it is facing our left and we see the bottom. On the other one, make it the opposite so it is facing to our right and we see the top. Remember these cross contours will essentially be moving on our X, Y, and Z line systems. Now let's try a slightly more complex shape. If your lines don't meet perfectly, you can try to smooth it out with the thinner marker. Now wrap cross contours around one side and down the body. For the other side, change the direction of the cross contour so it seems like the branches are facing away from each other. Now let's draw a more organic shape. By adding cross contours that are more than just simple ellipses, we can make it look like the surface has more complexity. For this last one, we'll make it look like a balloon animal. Wrap the X, Y, Z cross contours around the forms to create the volume, thinking about how the lines would move over and around the forms. For the tail section, we can straighten the cross contours out a little to make it seem like it is flatter than the other sections. Try to make all of these shapes and make up your own. Just start drawing weird, complex shapes on your paper, and then have fun figuring out the form with cross contours. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.